A special thanks to all my sponsors listed above. If you have not checked them out, make sure you go check them out on Facebook and Instagram. Give them a like or a follow. Amazing products for amazing people. Hey everybody, welcome back to Spars Outdoors. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up a river rod setup. That's the heavier rods for fishing off the boardwalk. I'm just going to go over the basics and give you some tips to help you get started if you don't know how to do it. Um, it's a great way to catch walleyes, steelhead, cohos, atlantics, you name it. An amazing way to catch fish. So I'm going to, I'm going to go over the basics on how to show you how to set these, these heavier rods up. A lot of people call it still fishing, that's what it's called to me. A lot of people call it river rod fishing. A lot of people call it many different things, but um, I'm gonna show you how to set up that river rod, the heavy rod, which uh, it's, it's actually a very simple setup, very easy to do, um, very productive way to get lots of fish, no doubt, no doubt. Um, we'll get into a little more about what kind of fish to target with these rods, but um, this right here is a 6'6", medium heavy. Very, very thick rod, you can see that. Got an Akuma, Akuma reel on here. Now the reel, the old Pen 209s, all that stuff, it, it all works, it all works. You know, we're not fighting sharks here, so whatever you can get, you know, even at garage sale, stuff like that. Um, get yourself a medium heavy rod, 6.6, six, anything from six to seven foot is gonna be, gonna be awesome. Um, Especially for the walleyes, you're casting a two pound sinker. So you want to make sure you have, you know, I always spool them up. If they're not already spooled, if you buy brand new, they'll come spooled up. But if they're not spooled up, I always put 20 pound on my main line. 20 to 30 pound, I should say, on the main line. Right now, this has 20 pound on it. Um, so I'm going to show you how to set this up. Obviously, you run your line through the eyes. And what you're going to want to do is when you get that line, run all the way through your eyes. I'm showing you. This was already set up. I took it all apart to show you guys. You're going to take a bead, just a bead from Hobby Lobby. Uh, run your line through the bead and then turn it around and run it back through the bead again. OK, that way you can slide this. I'll explain this in a second. Your beads on your line. You can slide it wherever you want your slide down to stop, which I'll show you the slide down here in a minute. So you got your bead on the line. Then what you're going to want to do is take a three-way swivel, okay? Three-way swivel. And again, the easy setups on these knots. So you're just going to do the overhand knot on the main line, okay? Just like that. Pull it tight. Run it through the three-way swivel. And then again, just do another knot and it'll stop right at that overhand knot. Just like that, pull it down. That's not going nowhere. It's on there good. Just take off the excess line there so it looks like that. Okay, so now that you got this tied on, now off the bottom of the three-way swivel, you're gonna take what they call a break off. That way if you snap your line and a snag, you're only gonna lose your sinker and you're not gonna lose your whole setup. So 14 pound break off. And then again, the overhand knot. Then a knot again. Then it'll stop right at that knot. Ain't going nowhere. I love that knot. So now, with this, what I like to do is I'll go, a lot of people will go, well, I'll run it three foot high. No, All, your, you, for your sinker off the bottom, 18 to 20 inches, that's it. So you're gonna take your two pound sinker. I'm hooked up here. You're going to take your two pound sinker and I'm just going to use this one. It's got no, uh, it's got no snap. It's got, it broke. <laughs> so I got many of them laying around. I just grabbed the first one I seen. So you just take your two pound sinker and you run that 18 inches off the bottom. So I, I kind of eyeball it. I kind of just, okay, so I'll go, eh, there's about 18 inches, right? 
So again, the overhand knot. Like that. So now you've got your two pound you got your two pound sinker, which there's extra line there. I'm not gonna cut off right now. I'm not trying to be perfect, I'm just trying to show you. 18 inches from that three-way swivel right there, okay? There's the three-way swivel. Then you got your bead that's on this line right here, which you're gonna wanna run typically right about nose to chest high. So I'll just leave it right there. That's where your slide down, I'll show you in a minute, will stop. Your, so off this three-way though, you wanna run a lead. And when you cast out, you got that running 18 inches off the bottom. And this time of year for the cohos and walleyes, I always run a spoon. My favorite spoon to run for, for off the wall. Uh, this is not a trolling spoon. They say it is, but it's not, it's for wall fishing. Is the red eye spoons are real thin, real light, so that current really gets them moving. You can't, unless you got a hard north wind, you're not gonna get away with those heavier trolling spoons like I use out in the boat. So, uh, as you can see here, I put a curve, I put a bend like that, where it's offset in all of my spoons. That way I get them hooked right there in the corner of that mouth, better hook sets, more hookups, and that's my favorite spoon to use right there is that fire tiger with the brass back. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to clip that onto that three-way. And as, as you can see there, I leave the barrel swivel on. You've, talk, you've heard me talk about when you're running Rapalas to take the barrel swivel off, and I do. But when I'm running spoons, because they're sitting there fluttering in the water, I keep the barrel swivel on at the spoon, okay? So you want to keep the barrel swivel on at the spoon. And then just a snap swivel just a snap with no barrel on the front. And you just clip that onto the three-way, and that way when you cast out, it's on the bottom, you got, you got one already set up on the bottom, and it's down there, 18 to 20, 20 inches off the bottom, just fluttering away. So walleyes and salmon, they'll come up, steelhead, they'll grab a hold of that, and a lot of times I catch that fish on that bottom spoon. Now we're gonna go with the slide down, and it's the same spoon, and here's, here's a slide down weight. It's got the snap swivel on the front and then just a barrel on the back, okay? And then on this, what I, it's already set up. You can <laughs> I've used this lead, so I go arm length, fingertip to fingertip for my lead. And then there's, again, it's the same spoon right there. Again, it's got that much, much bigger of a bend there, much more offset. I offset them however they offset is what I is typically what I keep it at whatever they're offset at I'll grab a pair of players bend it over and it's good enough it's good enough you know so this what you're going to do is after you're cast it out there and you're going to want to cast on you know on an angle because that current is ripping right so it's, it's shooting downstream you're going to want to cast on an angle um, if you don't know the angles to cast at just go up four rails from where your pole holder is which a pole holder you know is something like this uh, you can look up pole holders for, for the St. Clair River. Uh, max, max fishing rod holders work, work great. You just tighten this down to the railing, and this is what your rod would go in. But uh, you walk, and when I say rails, um, you want to fish like three rails apart. You got the rails that go down like this. So if you don't know the angle to cast at, go four rails from your pole holder and just cast out from there. Let the sinker hit bottom, because then it's going to be set up pretty much right in front of where your rod holder is. So then with the slide down, you're just gonna take this, clip this on to your, fit, to your line when it's in the water, close the three-way swivel, and then the current will slide it down and it's gonna stop right at that bead just like that. And then you're gonna have that lead in the water just uh, waiting for a fish to come along and take it. Now you're gonna wanna get some bells because you're gonna wanna put a bell at the end of this rod that when your rod goes off, your bell's ringing, right? So pretty much that's it. It's simple, easy setups, just like that. 18 inches off the, off the three-way to the, to the sinker. You run a lead, then you run your bead here, you know, six foot, five and a half to six foot, sometimes seven foot, just play around with it, figure out where they're biting, slide that bead up and down all you want. 
and sometimes I'll, if I'm getting them all low down here on the 18 inch lead, I'll run this one just above it. I'll run this one a foot, you know, so this is at 18 inches, I'll run this one at, at 30 inches, you know, I'll run it not too, not too far above it. Yeah, when you reel in to check it, your lines can get across, but if you use fluorocarbon leaders and kind of pull on them, they'll untwist themselves. So figure out where they're biting and that's it. You're set up. It's an easy setup, very easy to do. Now that's the heavy, heavy rods. That's, that's the way you're gonna catch them at the river on the heavy rods, river rods, okay? Another good way to catch the walleyes and the steelhead and the cohos and stuff right now is using the noodle rods. I don't have a noodle rod right here on me. They're out in my truck and I'm not gonna go out and get it in this nasty weather. But it's just like this. You run an eight ounce bell sinker or a pyramid sinker. So off your noodle rod, you're gonna run a lead off of a barrel swivel. You're gonna tie two barrel swivels on, okay? You're gonna tie a barrel swivel on four foot up from your, from your sinker, your eight ounce sinker. Then four feet up from that again, you're gonna run another one. So you're gonna run four foot and four foot. So you're gonna run one lead at eight foot and one lead at four foot off the bottom. That's how you're gonna run it. Then off those barrel swivels, you're gonna tie a lead with just a size six gold hook off, off each lead. And then run your metal on that and cast it out. The leads you're gonna run are gonna be about two and a half to three foot long. It's an excellent way to catch fish. Absolutely works great. Another thing you can do is you can put that eight to 10 ounce uh, pyramid sinker and use a hand lining shank, okay? And you can run the sinker right off that hand lining shank and then run a six foot lead with a minnow at the very top of the lead and of that hand lining shank and it works out great too. But I like to run two, so, and it's just the way I run them. There's other ways to run these, these setups and you'll see other guys how they do it. But I just put two small barrel swivels on my line, that way I can reel it through my eyes. You know, real small, tiny barrel swivels, and then you can tie your lead right to that. So you got two barrel swivels that are four foot apart. You got one at eight foot and one at four foot, and then you tie your, your leads for your minnows off of that and cast out pretty far if you get down there into that slack or that slower water down by the water filtration plant. That's about the only spot you're gonna do that on the river and catch those fish. And then just south of Black River, it works the same way out where they jig, you kind of cast out there, you can do the same thing right down there. So basically that's it. Um, you can get fishing rod, if you don't have fishing rod holders, these are good ones, you can get a hold of uh, Robert. These Max fishing rod holders made out of these C-clamps are amazing. You just untwist them, you put them on the railing, and then you just tighten them down with this right here. When you get them nice and tight, It'll set right there on the wall like that. You stick your rod in there. And like I said, you get your cowbell or whatever bell you desire, whatever sound you like. If you pick out the bell you want and you stick it at the tip of your rod and you wait for that rod to go off. Very productive way to catch fish. Now, this time of year is when you're gonna get your cohos, your steelhead, and your walleye mix bag. Um, you could have great days, you could have slow days. It all depends on the day. So within the next week is going to be very good for that absolutely it's, you're going to see me down there doing doing it very very soon within the next week i'm going to go down and be doing doing it myself and you will see me down there if you come down and i'll show you exactly how i'm setting up and i'm going to you're going to see what i just showed you exactly how i set that up is what you're going to see so um this time of year you want to run spoons absolutely that way you can get your silverfish and your walleye walleyes will hit them spoons just as well as they will a, a minnow or a challenger so or, or a little real pile, you know, just if I'm running anything, I'm running stuff small right now, you know, just, you know, like the John Latham right there, that frozen Barbie, beautiful color. Um, so I got Latham's laying around everywhere. Um, so yeah, uh, that's how you want to set your river rods up. I hope it was, I hope, I hope that it helped you guys out and I hope it was enough information to let you guys know how to set these river rods up for all you guys who've been asking me. Um, I'm going to make videos doing this too. I've got videos on there already of how I was doing it uh, walleye season last year. Later in the year when they had the sore mouth, I was, I, I've got some river rod fishing videos. So go down, go down in the videos, click on videos, scroll all the way down and you'll see my, my uh, boardwalk fishing videos down there of using these heavier rods actually. So, and what I was doing to catch those walleyes. But this time of year, I'm going to run spoons because the walleyes are going to hit them. The silverfish are going to hit them. And this is the time of year that the silverfish are going to bite good down off the wall. So uh, I'm gonna be getting my boat out. I, I, the weather changed rap rapidly, so I never did go get my boat. I'm gonna get that out tomorrow or the next day and get that ready. I'll be trolling Lake Huron, but I'm also, I, I love fishing off the wall too. So you guys will see me down there, but that is the most effective way that you can set these rods up. The most easy way 
and effective way and catch lots of fish. Trust me, it works. I did it my whole life and it's an absolutely positively awesome way to catch these fish. You, you can cover so much area and depth in a short period of time and figure out where them fish are biting. Um, if your bait fish are up high, obviously you're gonna run up high. If bait fish are low, you're gonna run low. But yeah, for the noodle rods, do as I told you. Um, Y'all have great luck and hope this video was informative enough for you guys and I hope it helped you guys out. So if you got any questions, leave, leave them in the comments and I'll, and I'll be sure to comment back. Thanks everybody again for watching Spars Outdoors. As you can see above, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. Keep supporting this channel. Thank you guys so much. And then we got that veterans giveaway coming up and it's going to be an awesome giveaway. You're not going to want to miss. Stay tuned. If you guys know any veterans, get them subscribed to this channel so they can win these veterans giveaways.